Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I want to thank Chairwoman Roybal Allard for her leadership on homeland security and for her uh, ideas on how we secure the border. I also want to thank the rank uh, ranking member, my friend from Tennessee also, and of course the uh, full committee uh, ranking woman, uh, Kay Ranger, also for the work that she's done. Of course, our leader, uh, Ms. Laurie, also for our chairman of the full committee. I rise in support of this resolution to reopen the government of homeland security. Uh, as we've said all along, we must first open up the government and we can negotiate. We've always done that. We've always keep the government open and then we negotiate. And then uh, we're doing this so the federal employees do not suffer. It's been 34 days since the government shut down, and far surpassing any other previous record. That means 34 days that 800 federal employees have not received pay. I live on the border. I don't just go and visit the border. I drink the water. I breathe the air. I talk to Border Patrol agents almost every day. I talk to CBP officers every day. I talk to TSA officers. I talk to other folks. And they are doing absolutely critical work to keep us safe, but not receiving a salary. Open up the government. Imagine trying to uh, patrol the border or keep airline passengers safe without receiving a single dime for the last 34 days. You might be concerned, you know, you might be concerned about not being able to pay your mortgage, your payment, uh, your car payment, food, medicine, your kids are going to school. That's what's going through those, uh, uh, those uh, federal employees at the border. I've talked to them. I talked to them, and we need to make sure that we open up the, the, uh, the government. Now, the, the, you know, the American public is ready for President Trump to put an end on this crippling shutdown. Yet, you know, let's keep the facts in mind. The president continues to reject any sort of compromise. We're ready. We're appropriators. We can sit down and work this out. I know we can. We've done it in the past, and what I want to make sure that is that we don't hold the federal employees hostage for a 14th century solution to, 20, to a 21st century issue that we're looking at. In Texas, we have natural barriers. Now, look at this. In West Texas, you've got probably over 100 feet of barriers up there. These are the natural barriers. Tell me how somebody's going to cross this. How, tell me how somebody's going to cross this natural barriers that we have. Or if you look at the southern part of Texas, you have a river. Private property rights are important. We got to make sure. Now, you tell me how this river crossover. over. You're going to put a, 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 a wall here and cut off people uh, from their property that they own so long. How are you going to do this? All I need is a $100 ladder to cross that, that, that particular thing. Or you can dig under the tunnel. Listen to the latest drug case in New York. What are the drug bad guys saying there? They can either go under through a tunnel, they can use a catapult, they can use a ladder, they can use other things. We want to make sure that we secure the border. I live in the border. I want to make sure we secure the border, but let's do it the right way. Now, if you want to stop people from coming in, remember 67% of the people that are here illegally, how do they come here? Through a legal visa. So even if you put a wall, they're going to fly over, they're going to drive through a bridge, or they're going to go ahead and come through a ship. And keep in mind, most of this visa overstay, you know where they're from? Canada. Canada. Now, I'm not asking you to look at the northern border and put a wall, but I'm saying Canadians look at the facts itself. So if you want to stop uh, drugs, just like the uh, chairwoman said, DEA, CBP, the, the drug uh, threatment assessment, they will tell you that most drugs will come in through ports of entry, either in car comp uh, compartments, either in trucks, either in trains, other ways. So even if you put a wall, they're going to go in. So what do we do is we got to make sure that we put canines on our bridges, make sure we have enough CBP officers, make sure we have x-ray machines. I mean, look at Laredo, my hometown. We get 15,000 trailers a day, 15,000 trailers a day. We need to put technology there. We need to put K-9. We need to put CBP officers to make sure that we, uh, you know, work on securing our border. Now, everybody talks about a crisis. 2001, we had about 1.6 million individuals at Border Patrol stopped. Now it's what, 398,000? Look what happened, the numbers have gone down, and if you wanna talk about the safety of our security, I will tell you that my hometown of Laredo is about three, four times safer 
than we are here in Washington, D.C. Murder rates, assaults, uh, rapes, name all the violent crimes. It's safer here. So the most dangerous things that I do. Expired. Okay. I yield to the gentleman two more minutes. So uh, so the yield most the initial two minutes. that I do when I'm on the border is when I leave the border to come to Washington, D.C. I'm not talking about the politics. I'm talking about it's more violent here. So what should we do? Let's open up the government. Let's sit down, advocate for 21st century solutions, technology, increased uh, personnel. We're losing more Border Patrol. What do we do? What does the administration do? They put a, a $297 million contract to hire, to show them how to hire Border Patrol. They just put out a $14.8 million uh, payment to hire two, two, two Border Patrol for almost $15 million. Increase per, uh, personnel, increase the infrastructure at the ports of entry, increase immigration judges. We've been increasing immigration judges for the last three years. Come on, this is nothing new. We've been doing that. Uh, and again, one of the most important things, do we play defense on the one-yard line where we spent $18 billion on the U.S. border, or do we play defense on the 20-yard line, which is working with the southern part of Mexico, where we put $80 million a couple years ago, and what happened? They started stopping 220,000 individuals a, a, a year. A lot of people that are coming in and put money in Central America, which we've done before, to do that. So again, given the facts, I just call upon our friends, open up the government, let's negotiate. We're appropriators. I feel very confident that if we open up the government, we sit down, we'll find a solution. And with that, uh, Mr. Speaker, I yield back the balance of my time.